Christine Forster is a Sydney suburban mum of four, respected journalist, Sydney City Councillor and marriage equality advocate. She also happens to be Prime Minister Tony Abbott's sister. Christine joins us in the studio with her partner and fiance, Virginia Edwards. Ladies, welcome to Inside Out. Thank Hi you. Carl, thanks, thanks for having us. Uh, Christine, I just want to ask first off, did you get sick of being referred to as Tony Abbott's sister? Well, it is a bit worn thin now, I have yeah. to say, Carl. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I'm my own person, obviously. I'm doing my own thing. Uh, he's he's my older brother and uh, we get have a great relationship. We get on well, but he's certainly off doing his own thing. Exactly. Uh, and, and I'm very much focused on doing what I'm doing here in the city of Sydney uh, and, uh, you know, living my life quite independently. Yeah. So it is a bit of a bore, really, yeah. to be honest. Well, just on that, um, you've made the move into politics. Why did you make the move? Well, look, local government was something I was, I've always been interested in. And I, I actually got interested in local government when my kids were, were very young mm. and I was involved in a local childcare centre, which sort of gave me some interaction with local government. And, and, and I thought, well, when, when the kids get older uh, and are more independent, then that would be a great time to go back into it. And that's how it turned out. And it does actually fulfil you know, a lifelong ambition in the sense that, I mean, I was involved in student politics, yes. you know, back in the old days at Sydney Uni at, on the SRC, which is real politics at the mm -hmm. coalface uh, at that level. Now, a few people have asked me to ask you, do you have any aspirations to move down the road to Macquarie Street or maybe <laughs> down to uh, Canberra? I'd love to, I'd love to move into the Lord Mayor's office. Really? Um, that's my main ambition. Uh, but obviously, you know, Clover Moore's a, you know, she's a formidable uh, she certainly is. Lord she's Mayor, and she's, lo she's been there since 2004. Mm. She's going to be very difficult to, to, to unseat uh, uh, for anyone. Um, I suspect she'll, she'll, she'll have to retire before anyone else gets a look in. So it's, it, but that would be my ideal job, absolutely. Mm. Now, talking about your plans for Sydney, you've been a very strong supporter of erecting a memorial in Taylor Square. Yep. Where are we at the moment with that? A couple of weeks ago when we had the flag raising ceremony at Town Hall, the Lord Mayor, pretty much out of the blue, well, was out of the blue to me and everybody else that I've spoken to, said that, uh, announced that she was going to be commissioning a public artwork uh, commemorating the GLBTI community, which would be installed in time for the 40th anniversary, uh, 2018. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you have to wait till then. Yeah, uh, which was kind of my response. Well, why do we have to wait that long? Exactly. Uh, so she then took that resolution about the public artwork to council and uh, I put up an amendment on it to say, mm. well, in the meanwhile, let's put up a flag in Taylor Square so that we have something that is permanent and immediate. And, and not in four years' yeah, time. And mm. not in, yeah. yeah, not in five years' time, because why do we need to wait? Uh, the community's told us they want something mm. there. Mm. Uh, a flag's quick, easy, cheap. People will, you know, go to it and, and have symbol. photos taken. Yeah, exactly. And it'll, yeah, it yeah. will be a meeting point and what have you. And, yeah, there are other places around the world that have big rainbow flags and they've become you know, really sort of mm. institutional. So, so when can we expect to see the flag? As soon as possible, I hope. Well, she, uh, I, I suspect the rainbow flag's flying above Town Hall at the I've moment. I've seen it, yes. So, it's and it does. Yeah, it always, it always flies above fl uh, Town Hall for the Mardi Gras Festival. So I guess once the festival's over, mm. uh, the pl flagpole should be installed with, you know, with some haste, I would hope. And if it doesn't happen quickly, I'll, you can rest assured that I'll be asking questions as to why not. Now, we're going to move on. Um, the two of you have been engaged for a couple of years now. A year. A year. A year. A year. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Virginia, was there a romantic proposal? <laughs> yes, of course there was. Uh, actually, no. We were the <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. I'm we not were, a romantic type. <laughs> we were the Broken Hill Races. The Broken Hill <laughs> Races. So we're going to forget the Eiffel Tower in yeah, Paris, yeah, the yeah, gondola yeah. in and, Venice. And, and, and we're staying in a beautiful cottage and Christian uh, proposed. And yeah. I thought it was completely out of the blue and it was wonderful. You had no idea? No, I didn't actually. No. There wasn't any down on bended knee. I think it was over no. a cup of tea. And no, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't uh, <laughs> practical to, to the. Well, well, doing the dishes. So yeah, you want to get yeah, married? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I think we're snogging in bed. No. <laughs> Too much information. <laughs> yes, but it wasn't. It was. It was a, a wonderful proposal. Virginia, how was your first meeting with Tony? It was like meeting anybody else's elder brother. Yeah. There was never any, you know, leader of the opposition at that point. Mm. No, Tony's just a. Uh, a very welcoming, engaging... No, actually, he wasn't the leader of the opposition. It was he well before that. Oh, he, that's yeah, quite yeah. right, he wasn't, mm. yeah. Mm. So, no, it was just like, I was as anxious as anybody would be meeting any uh, partner's family. Yes. 
and no more, no less, just because of who he was. And in fact, he was very welcoming, as were Margie and the, mm. the girls. Can you, can you explain to us, he has a sister who's a lesbian, a loving relationship. Both his daughters have come out in support of marriage equality. The majority of the country which he represents wants change. More conservative countries in the world have embraced change. Yep. <laughs> Why is he not willing to be the man to take Australia forward when one day it is going to happen? Well, he's not standing in the way of us moving forward on, on this. He's, he has made it really clear that when the issue comes up in the new party room, and it's going to come up, uh, that it'll be open for discussion and that the party will decide where they stand on, on it. The party will decide whether it's a, and the party being all the members of the party room, he's just mm. one member, yes. let's remember. Yes, got one vote. Mm. Yeah, uh, that w whether they believe it's a conscience issue and, uh, or, or you know, heaven forbid that they voted. A referendum. Or, or, or no, they wouldn't, they, the party room can't vote for a referendum, but uh, heaven forbid they voted to maintain or to go back to the policy that they had before, which was to support the Marriage Act as it stands. Mm, so that mm. would be the worst outcome. Mm. Um, but uh, you know, a, the best outcome would be that they the best outcome would be that they voted to make marriage equality Liberal Party policy. That would be incredible. <laughs> but um, I'm and not pigs, holding my breath. Pigs breasts. may fly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, baby steps. <laughs> it's a matter of getting the majority of the, of the party mm. room over the line. Yeah, thinking so you fear that, that this if is we a go conscience too vote. soon, it won't happen. That that Tanya would be best to hold back before introducing it. My gut feel is yes. Yeah, look, I think it's too right now is a bit too soon. Mm. I certainly appreciate and understand people's impatience. I'm impatient. We're impatient. We'd like to get married, mm. but you can't. It's not the sort of thing you can push people on. Uh, mm. The Labor Party found that. <laughs> um, it has to be a kind of a step change. People need to come along with it, and society and in general yeah. still isn't quite there, let's be honest. I mean, I know AME quotes figures 64%, I think, in favour of um, marriage equality. But, you know, if that were tested at a referendum, gee whiz, I mm. think we'd be very lucky to get 64%. It's very 64%. hard for referendum to get passed though, so, isn't it? So, the, so the, the private members bill, it's great that it's, it's up there. It makes marriage equality, yet again, a talking point. It's, you know, it's a, it's a news grab, fantastic, but my o soon. yeah, it, my overall thinking about it is that we don't want this bill to go before Parliament until it has the very, very best chance of succeeding. I read somewhere that um, when you can get married, that mm. you're planning on having drag queens. <laughs> that was my throwaway. <laughs> Instead of bridesmaids. No, we're well, going to have bridesmaids plus. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted to know if there any chance of getting Tony in the bridal party. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably a good chance of well, getting him in the bridal party. So. If, uh, yeah, yeah, well, he loves karaoke. But not in drag. <laughs> um, no, 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 I think so. Um, he wouldn't be a good look. Look, I'm sure. I'm sure if I asked him to give me away, he'd be he'd be honoured to, yeah. to give me away. Um, Probably couldn't get away, give me away fast <laughs> enough, really. <laughs> but um, uh, no, I'm sure he would. He, he's, he, you know, he, he knows, he knows that we want to get married, and he's c quite comfortable about that. Um, and if the, if, if we are getting married, remember, it will be under the law of Australia. Exactly. And mm -hmm. there's no greater champion and upholder of the laws of Australia than the Prime Minister. So he, he will absolutely be there here. Mm -hmm. Now this week we're celebrating everything Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. yep. Ladies, do you think the parade is still relevant? Oh, oh yes. yes. Yeah. Go on. I actually <laughs> can't see why, why we believe that it wouldn't be relevant. Right, well, it's starting back in 1978 when obviously it was a Correct. protest, etc. Yeah, now it seems to be rights, more of a yeah. celebration. See, many people argue that we, we've thankfully, we've got we've got our rights. Yeah. Yeah. We're just waiting for marriage equality to come along. Mm. Um, that's the point I'm making. Is it relevant as a protest now? Oh. I don't think I, I no. Don't, it's not I, a protest. Yeah, it's, it's an acknowledgement of our community. Yes, as uh, as bringing our community into the forefront of an event in in mm. our calendar. Mm. You know, this is something that people look forward to. This is you know my daughter's coming down from Bathurst mm. to march with us. So it's it's normalising who we are on on the status of Australia. Mm. You know we're relevant. We're important. We have a voice. Um, yes, there's a lot more showmanship to it now than there probably was, in, in fact there was in yeah. the early 80s. But yes, it is relevant. I think that mm. I'd be disappointed to see that it 
didn't occur. But, but also to reach out to our gay brothers and sisters across the world as well who are not mm, so fortunate as ourselves. Of course. It's yeah. a show of solidarity. Mm. And there's no doubt, I mean, I don't think that Mardi Gras now is a protest per se, but Mardi Gras is certainly still political uh, and is making a statement. I mean, I can guarantee you there'll be somebody lampooning Tony uh, in, the, <laughs> in the parade. Uh, it's, you know, it's gonna, it goes expected. without saying. Um, uh, but it's, it really is a show of solidarity. It's a show of support and that is very significant, particularly, I guess, for young gay and lesbian people mm. uh, or transgender people uh, who can you know, draw from that the fact that there is a whole community of people there uh, here in Sydney support, yeah, that they are not alone. Mm. Uh, if, you know, particularly, I think, uh, kids in, in regional and rural Australia that, that probably you know, don't have the same community around them that we're very lucky to have here in the inner city of Sydney, um, that uh, you know must draw great comfort and, uh, from the fact that they can flick on the telly or you mm. know that the parades there and can see a very and high profile, yep. visible presence of our community, and 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 what what you know what we stand for. There is one thing that has disappointed me in the past. Um, why do you think that no Liberal Prime Minister? I'm going back to Howard as well has lent their support to the Mardi Gras parade in the official Mardi Gras booklet. Mm, There's yeah. always comments from the Governor General, um, other leading political figures, but then it just says, Prime Minister Tony Abbott refused to answer. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Look, I, I it's was... just a... Yeah, I was disappointed too. And I, look, yeah. I was disappointed in that, I have to be honest. Uh, and, and, you know, you'd have to ask him... That's a kick why, in the guts. ..why he, yeah, why he did decided not to do it. But I suspect the answer is uh, in that the fact that the parade is political. Um, a, a big element if, of it is political. And it's generally not But the Liberal, pa the Liberal Party's going to be there. You're parading <laughs> well, for we the are, Liberal Party. But, you know, that's fine. I mean, that's a call that we make as mm -hmm. Liberals. Um, and I guess he made a call himself as, as the Liberal uh, leader. Um, you know, unfortunate. I agree with you. I wish he yeah, had. Uh, I wish mm. he had um, given us given a message of support. But that's his decision to make. That is. And his he knows that I'm marching. Make. Yeah. Uh, and the Virginia is marching, and he just you know was a good, have have a good night. Mm. Yeah. Ladies, we're going to finish off with a little bit of word association. I'm going to give you a word or a Dear. name, and I just want the first thing that comes into your head. We've got 60 seconds on the Do clock. Do I have to skull if I say that? <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to run through them as quickly as possible. Um, I'll start with um, a response from you, Virginia, and then from you, Christine. Okay. So for each one. All right. We'll start the clock now. Fred Nile. Uh, surprisingly nice fellow. Christine. Codger. Codger. <laughs> the monarchy. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't look good in a tiara. Queen. <laughs> one word, babe. I can't Co do one word. <laughs> Corey <Corey> Bernardi. <laughs> oh. Unfortunate. Penny Wong. Okay. Senator. <laughs> Rainbow Crossings. I need more of them. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of Gay. words of mine. Gay. <laughs> As in Duncan. <laughs> Clover. <laughs> I love it. Clover Moore. Lord Mayor. <laughs> Nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> Homophobia. Wrong. Yeah, bad. 1.30 a.m. lockouts. Disappointing. Shocker. Favourite drag queen. Uh, oh, no, we can't say. What <laughs> really. There's so many. It's, it's a, a deliberate question. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Charisma, Charisma Bell. Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Christine Foster of uh, Virginia Edwards, thank you so much for joining us today and we wish you a happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras, Carl. <laughs>